The European Economic Community was a regional organization which aimed to bring about economic integration between its member states. It was created by the Treaty of Rome of 1957. Upon the formation of the European Union in 1993, the EEC was incorporated and renamed as the European Community. In 2009 the EEC's institutions were absorbed into the EU's wider framework and the community ceased to exist. The community's initial aim was to bring about economic integration, including a common market and customs union, among its six founding members, Belgium, France, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands and West Germany. It gained a common set of institutions along with the European Coal and Steel Community and the European Atomic Energy Community as one of the European communities under the 1965 Merger Treaty. In 1993, a complete single market was achieved, known as the Internal Market, which allowed for the free movement of goods, capital, services and people within the EEC. In 1994, the internal market was formalized by the EEA agreement. This agreement also extended the internal market to include most of the member states of the European Free Trade Association, forming the European Economic Area covering 15 countries. Upon the entry into force of the Maastricht Treaty in 1993, the EEC was renamed the European Community to reflect that it covered a wider range than economic policy. This was also when the three European communities, including the EEC, were collectively made to constitute the first of the three pillars of the European Union, which the treaty also founded. The EC existed in this form until it was abolished by the 2009 Treaty of Lisbon, which incorporated the EC's institutions into the EU's wider framework and provided that the EU would replace and succeed the European Community. The EEC was also known as the common market in the English-speaking world and sometimes referred to as the European Community even before it was officially renamed as such in 1993. History Background In 1951, the Treaty of Paris was signed, creating the European Coal and Steel Community. This was an international community based on supranationalism and international law, designed to help the economy of Europe and prevent future war by integrating its members. In the aim of creating a federal Europe, two further communities were proposed, a European defense community and a European political community. While the treaty for the latter was being drawn up by the Common Assembly, the ECSC Parliamentary Chamber, the proposed defense community was rejected by the French Parliament. ECSC President Jean Monnet, a leading figure behind the communities, resigned from the high authority in protest and began work on alternative communities, based on economic integration rather than political integration. After the Messina Conference in 1955, Paul Henry Sparrock was given the task to prepare a report on the idea of a customs union. The so-called Sparrock Report of the Sparrock Committee formed the cornerstone of the intergovernmental negotiations at Val Castle in 1956. Together with the Olin Report the Sparrock Report would provide the basis for the Treaty of Rome. In 1956, Paul Henry Sparrock led the Intergovernmental Conference on the Common Market and Euratom at the Val Duchessa Castle, which prepared for the Treaty of Rome in 1957. The conference led to the signature, on 25 March 1957, of the Treaty of Rome establishing a European Economic Community. Creation and early years The resulting communities were the European Economic Community and the European Atomic Energy Community. These were markedly less supranational than the previous communities, due to protests from some countries that their sovereignty was being infringed. The first formal meeting of the Halstein Commission was held on 16 January 1958 at the Chateau de Val Duchessa. The EEC was to create a customs union while Euratom would promote cooperation in the nuclear power sphere. The EEC rapidly became the most important of these and expanded its activities. 
One of the first important accomplishments of the EECE was the establishment of common price levels for agricultural products. In 1968, internal tariffs were removed on certain products. Another crisis was triggered in regard to proposals for the financing of the Common Agricultural Policy, which came into force in 1962. The transitional period whereby decisions were made by unanimity had come to an end, and majority voting in the council had taken effect. Then French President Charles de Gaulle's opposition to supranationalism and fear of the other members challenging the cap led to an empty chair policy, whereby French representatives were withdrawn from the European institutions until the French veto was reinstated. Eventually, a compromise was reached with the Luxembourg Compromise on 29 January 1966 whereby a gentleman's agreement permitted members to use a veto on areas of national interest. On 1 July 1967 when the merger treaty came into operation, combining the institutions of the ECSC and Eurotom into that of the EEC, they already shared a parliamentary assembly and courts. Collectively they were known as the European Communities. The communities still had independent personalities although were increasingly integrated. Future treaties granted the community new powers beyond simple economic matters which had achieved a high level of integration. As it got closer to the goal of political integration and a peaceful and united Europe, what Mikhail Gorbachev described as a common European home. Enlargement in elections The 1960s saw the first attempts at enlargement. In 1961, Denmark, Ireland, Norway and the United Kingdom applied to join the three communities. However, President Charles de Gaulle saw British membership as a Trojan horse for U.S. influence and vetoed membership, and the applications of all four countries were suspended. The four countries resubmitted their applications on the 11th of May 1967 and with Georges Pompidou succeeding Charles de Gaulle as French president in 1969, the veto was lifted. Negotiations began in 1970 under the pro-European government of Edward Heath, who had to deal with disagreements relating to the common agricultural policy and the UK's relationship with the Commonwealth of Nations. Nevertheless, two years later the accession treaties were signed and all but Norway acceded to the community from 1 January 1973. The treaties of Rome had stated that the European Parliament must be directly elected. However, this required the Council to agree on a common voting system first. The Council procrastinated on the issue and the Parliament remained appointed. French President Charles de Gaulle was particularly active in blocking the development of the Parliament, with it only being granted budgetary powers following his resignation. Parliament pressured for agreement and on 20 September 1976 the Council agreed part of the necessary instruments for election, deferring details on electoral systems which remain varied to this day. During the tenure of President Jenkins, in June 1979, the elections were held in all the then members. The new parliament, galvanized by direct election and new powers, started working full-time and became more active than the previous assemblies. Shortly after its election, Parliament became the first community institution to propose that the community adopt the flag of Europe. The European Council agreed to this and adopted the symbols of Europe as those of the community in 1984. The European Council, or European Summit, had developed since the 1960s as an informal meeting of the Council at the level of heads of state. It had originated from then-French President Charles de Gaulle's resentment at the domination of supranational institutions over the integration process. It was mentioned in the treaties for the first time in the Single European Act. Towards Maastricht Greece applied to join the community on 12 June 1975, following the restoration of democracy, and joined on 1 January 1981. Following on from Greece, and after their own democratic restoration, Spain and Portugal applied to the communities in 1977 and joined together on 1 January 1986. 
In 1987 Turkey formally applied to join the community and began the longest application process for any country, with the prospect of further enlargement, and a desire to increase areas of cooperation. The Single European Act was signed by the foreign ministers on the 17th and the 28th of February 1986 in Luxembourg and The Hague respectively. In a single document it dealt with reform of institutions, extension of powers, foreign policy cooperation and the single market. It came into force on the 1st of July 1987. The act was followed by work on what would be the Maastricht Treaty, which was agreed on the 10th of December 1991, signed the following year and coming into force on the 1st of November 1993, establishing the European Union. European Community The EU absorbed the European Communities as one of its three pillars. The EEC's areas of activities were enlarged and were renamed the European Community, continuing to follow the supranational structure of the EEC. The EEC institutions became those of the EU, however the Court, Parliament and Commission had only limited input in the new pillars, as they worked on a more intergovernmental system than the European Communities. This was reflected in the names of the institutions. The Council was formerly the Council of the European Union, while the Commission was formerly the Commission of the European Communities. However, after the Treaty of Maastricht, Parliament gained a much bigger role. Maastricht brought in the co-decision procedure, which gave it equal legislative power with the Council on Community Matters. Hence, with the greater powers of the supranational institutions in the operation of qualified majority voting in the Council, the community pillar could be described as a far more federal method of decision-making. The Treaty of Amsterdam transferred responsibility for free movement of persons from the Justice and Home Affairs pillar to the European community. As a result, both Amsterdam and the Treaty of Nice also extended co-decision procedure to nearly all policy areas, giving Parliament equal power to the Council in the community. In 2002, the Treaty of Paris which established the EECSC expired, having reached its 50-year limit. No attempt was made to renew its mandate. Instead, the Treaty of Nice transferred certain of its elements to the Treaty of Rome and hence its work continued as part of the EC area of the European Community's remit. After the entry into force of the Treaty of Lisbon in 2009 the pillar structure ceased to exist. The European Community, together with its legal personality, was absorbed into the newly consolidated European Union which merged in the other two pillars. This was originally proposed under the European Constitution but that treaty failed ratification in 2005. Aims and Achievements the main aim of the EEC, as stated in its preamble, was to preserve peace and liberty and to lay the foundations of an ever closer union among the peoples of Europe, calling for balanced economic growth. This was to be accomplished through the establishment of a customs union with a common external tariff, common policies for agriculture, transport and trade, including standardization, enlargement of the EEC to the rest of Europe. For the Customs Union, the treaty provided for a 10% reduction in custom duties and up to 20% of global import quotas. Progress on the Customs Union proceeded much faster than the 12 years planned. However, France faced some setbacks due to their war with Algeria. Members, the six states that founded the EEC and the other two communities were known as the Inner Six. The six were France, West Germany, Italy and the three Benelux countries, Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg. The first enlargement was in 1973, with the accession of Denmark, Ireland and the United Kingdom. Greece, Spain and Portugal joined in the 1980s. The former East Germany became part of the EEC upon German reunification in 1990. 
Following the creation of the EU in 1993, it has enlarged to include an additional 16 countries by 2013. Member states are represented in some form in each institution. The Council is also composed of one national minister who represents their national government. Each state also has a right to one European commissioner each. Although in the European Commission they are not supposed to represent their national interest but that of the community. Prior to 2004, the larger members have had two commissioners. In the European Parliament, members are allocated a set number seats related to their population. However, these have been directly elected and they sit according to political allegiance, not national origin. Most other institutions, including the European Court of Justice, have some form of national division of its members.